focus, you fuck. I don't know if you recognize this one. Anybody that's around uh, often. Yes, it is another 2159 MacBook Pro from 2019 with the exact same problem that we described before. So this chip and this chip, the normal ISLs, are short at the ground. Wow, that's some bent. 1.8 ohms to ground. This one here, 1.4 ohms to ground. Both of them shorted. Check the backlight driver. This backlight driver is okay. You got one meg there. I'm doing 22K. I was charging up some capacitors there. So backlight should be fine, unless there's something wrong with the screen. And the normal ISL GAY drivers are dead. So we have here replacements. So this is now makes about a dozen of these machines in the shop. With the same problem. One, two. That was an unearned giggity. So yet again, these have got to go. Seems to be there's a uh, debate over hot air station versus a Wagner paint gun. One of the best technicians I've ever known says that he exclusively uses a Wagner paint gun. He never wanted to invest in a uh, hot air station. If the Wagner paint gun just heats too big of an area, you have less control over what temperature you're at, how much air is flowing out of it. It's not a good idea to use them. What was orientation? And it's ergonomics too. This this is just a small little handle that I'm holding, not a gigantic heat gun. So to avoid having to add solder later, I'm going to add a little bit of solder to these pads. Hopefully I increase the solder a little bit. We're putting a brand new chip on here so it has no solder on it. So it's either we go around afterwards or we add some now. I prefer going around afterwards, but as it was shown in the last video, this, this is a really tight area. I'll dip this in a little bit of flux over here. Got a little pool of flux because I used too much. So I'm just going to dip it in there, pull that back over to here, and focus, you fuck. And one really wants a jeweler's electronics microscope, but no one ha has the funds. These aren't that expensive. $300? And that's, you could save that up for after a little while. $300 is attainable. That's one. 
Create a little bit more of a fillet on that one side. Looks good. No, I don't buy my own flux, but I do have to clean my own boards. If you have somebody else cleaning your board for you, then you don't care how dirty you get it. When you have to clean your board, then you pay attention to how dirty you're getting it. Using a toothbrush to clean the board is not ideal because it doesn't pick anything up. The fibers that, that a Q-tip leave is, you could deal with that. You just twist the Q-tip and it picks up its own fibers. But how do you get the flux off the board with a toothbrush? You just keep spraying enough alcohol to go all over the board? I, I don't want to get the entire board wet with alcohol. No, you're not in the U.S., so it's more expensive for a microscope. What about shipping from, like, AliExpress or something like that? Is, sh is shipping ridiculous for you? Like, if you're willing to go to AliExpress, you get a decent microscope for a real good price. But shipping just might be insane. Plus, a microscope for the average user is cheaper than what we get because you don't need the camera port. Yeah, the mount is very heavy. The microscope mount is extremely heavy to keep it stable, so yeah, they, they probably kill you with shipping that thing. If you can get away with, you know... If you have a, a dedicated desk like what we have here, you don't need the, the weight mount. You can actually just bolt it straight to the desk. That's an option. Just don't get it and, and get a good table to bolt it straight to. You know, toothbrush with alcohol and then toothbrush with paper towel and alcohol, you're adding a bunch of steps. I'm sure that works if you have a giant mess, but this chip is tiny. And yeah, I'm leaving some, some stray strands. All I do is twist the Q-tip over top of it, picks up all its stray strands. And once you get it clean enough, the stray strands just blow away anyway. Because no, there's nothing for them to stick to. Clean up this one. Barpedurkel. Okay, let's see how this is working now. Go 
overhead. Lower that. That board's kind of hot. Let's do some rapid cooling. Okay, we don't need fume extraction anymore. A little less noise. Make sure the rubber stays in place. So now let's see if their screen's working. So that's the other popular thing to happen here is that the screen doesn't work. I have a test screen ready to test and make sure the board works if the screen's not working. We could go backwards. We could try a test screen first and then go to the board, but save a step if this is working already. Okay, screen, uh, what else? I'm not gonna connect anything else, just the screen, charge port. Battery cable's fallen, let's get that to the side. Okay, USB-C. Let's see. How much power it takes? 20 volts, 1.24 amps, or 0.124, sorry. So three, three quarters of an amp, half an amp, 0.6, 600 milliamps. Do I see an Apple logo? I don't see a backlight or Apple logo yet. I have Apple logo. Yeah, you can kind of see that. I have an Apple logo. I have no backlight. So let's try a test screen. So maybe it's in the screen. All this comes back to backlight. Something, something's going on with backlight. There's some good suggestions to take a look into from our last video. Some of them, I don't, I don't know. The, the, um, some of the good suggestions were uh, maybe something's wrong with the backlight that's feeding back into it, but there's more sensitive things on that line than, uh, than those two ISLs. So I don't know if it's the... Uh, I don't know if it's the backlight feeding back into it or not. I don't know. We're still, still looking into it, still trying to figure it out. So there's some good suggestions, though. It's a good, good, uh, good discussion in the, in the uh, doobly-doo below. Uh, let me go get a charge board. I don't have a charge board. One moment. He's back. Okay, charge port. You have to lift the board so that the sleep sensor doesn't think the lid is closed. Well, let's see if we get Apple logo on this. And we got Apple logo with backlight. So it's another bad screen too. And that, that almost makes this, uh, this board, um, or this, this job undoable. It's just, it, get, it gets too expensive there. So just like the last one that I fixed, we found out that the screen was bad and it was just, it was just too expensive for the customer. Uh, they wound up just recycling the device with us. Thank you for calling us. Uh, Can I help you come out to this one, I, I don't know how much... It, it, we need to try to get screens for cheaper. Screens are, are hard to come by. Because they, this, is, this isn't just the screen. This is the screen assembly. You can't just pull out the LCD. This is the whole screen assembly. There's something wrong with the screen daughter board here. You need to look into the screen daughter board. I have the old screen, the other screen too. But this is, this is a, not really a viable repair sometimes. Hmm. Wah, wah, wah. We can't get replacement screens, it's just that they're expensive. 
It, 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 it makes the overall repair of this job just, just too much for a lot of people. Although the machine is, it's only two years old and it did cost a lot of money to get the machine new. So it, it, they do still have enough value, but it's, it's just getting there where it's very close to the replacement value of the entire thing from eBay or something like that. But at least the board is working. Um, we should be able to pull data off of it if we need to. Well, yeah, we can. You just, you know, hook up a, another screen or put it in another te a test housing. So we could pull data off of it. So their data is saved because this has a soldered on hard drive. So it's not like you just take your data with you. We need to recover it off of it, copy it to something portable. So that that's something. At least at least this is this is viable for data recovery to get the the machine up and running again and get the per, the person's data off of it. So that's more important than the machine is is all of your pictures and all of your files off of it. Yeah, I have the other screen for the guy that recycled it with us. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna wind up tearing that whole thing apart and checking everything on that daughter board and see if I can figure out if something did did a capacitor short closed on that screen and sent backlight for an instant down the five volt line but then i would think more would die i don't know this this is a weird um thought experiment hope you learned something don't trust a macbook with your data you never know when one of the, there's a lot of failures in macbooks that cause them to never turn on again and with the soldered on ssd the, you, there's no way to get your data back Always make a backup of your stuff. Never trust it on one device, on one, especially a soldered in hard drive device or something like that. Never trust your data on that. Like this includes your phone, it, especially you, every, anybody who has iPhones. All you have is the internal storage. You don't have a SD card slot. At least if you have an SD card slot, your, your phone could get, like Lewis, get burnt up on a, on a bike that went on fire. And we can still peel the thing open, get the SD card out, and there's all your data. So always keep a backup, always keep something on external. Never trust a soldered in external or internal memory for all of your important stuff. Not a good idea. Have a good day.